In statics, when we're looking at a centroid, one of the things we're concerned about is distributed loads. In this particular example, the fine statement reads to determine the support reactions. So as review, you can see that at point A, there is a roller, and at point B is a hinge. In order to determine the support reactions in this case, though, we're going to have to take this distributed load, which is triangular in shape, and resolve it into forces so that we can use those forces in our static equilibrium equations. Probably the first thing to do here is to draw those support reactions. So at point A there was a roller and hopefully you remember that a roller produces one unknown perpendicular to the surface. In this case the surface was horizontal. So the force is going to be vertical. Point B was a hinge and a hinge produces two forces, an X force and a Y force. Now what we do with these distributed loads is the new part of this problem. Whenever you have a distributed load, you can simplify that distributed load and replace it with an equivalent force. And the force is equivalent to the area, and the force is located at the centroid of that shape. So once again, the force that replaces a distributed load is equivalent to its area and located at the centroid. So in my ox comp, I'm going to first calculate the distributed load force, the equivalent force for this distributed load over here, and I'll call that L1. That shape is a triangle. The area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. The base here is A, which is 3 meters. The height is 6 kilonewtons per meter. If you'll notice, your units will cancel out, the meters will cancel out, and L1 will be left with the unit of kilonewtons. L1 is 9 kilonewtons. Since the original distributed load was going down, this new force, L, will also be going down. The centroid of a triangle is located a third away from the side with a right angle. So this distance here that I'm going to call x bar 1 is 1 meter. Now let's look at this second shape. L2 is also a triangle, and the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. Remember the value of the force that replaces the distributed load is equivalent to its area. So that's 1 half of 6 meters times 6 kilonewtons per meter. And L2 is 18 kilonewtons. The value of the force that replaces the distributed load is equivalent to its area and the distance the distributed load is located at the centroid of that particular shape. In this case our centroid of a triangle is a third away from the side with the right angle. So our x bar 2 is going to be a third of the base which was 6. So now we've got our distributed loads converted into simple point forces. From this point forward, this, this problem is the same as solving any other problem with support reactions. So let's start by looking in the x direction. Some of the forces in the x direction equals zero. And if we sum force in the x direction, we will see there's only one force in the x direction. It's F2x. That's our only unknown. Our action is solve. Let's sum forces in the y direction. There are two unknowns in the y direction. I don't know f1 and I don't know f2y. My action is don't start. So now we need to start looking where forces cancel out. For example, if we sum moments around point B, both f2x and f2y will cancel out, and that'll leave f1 as my only unknown. How do I find F2Y? Well, you'll notice that F2X and F1 both go through point A. So if I sum moments at point A, that means that F2Y is my only unknown, and my action is solve. Now the order in which you choose to do these is entirely up to you. I decided to start with moments around A, then do forces in the x direction and finish up with moments around point B. Remember your equilibrium analysis must also include a check solution so I'm going to use some of the forces in the y direction for that. So when I'm applying static equilibrium to moments with respect to A 
I start off with my statement of my assumption of static equilibrium. So looking at point A, F1 cancels out and produces no moment because it goes through point A. Likewise, F2x goes through point A. So my only unknown is F2y. L1 and L2 I already know, and I know they're d perpendiculars. So now I can solve this problem for F2y. F2y, if you look at its rotation, it produces positive rotation around point A, and its perpendicular distance is b. L1 produ produces positive rotation around point A, and its perpendicular distance to point A is x1. L2 is going to try to produce negative rotation around point A, and its perpendicular distance is x bar 2. Solving for F2y gives us this, and now we can plug our numbers in, and we'll find that F2y equals a positive 4.5 kilonewtons. Remember that that positive sign indicates agreement or disagreement with the diagram, so if it was negative it would be going the opposite the way, direction of the way I have it drawn. All three of those unknowns, F1, F2y, and F2x, I just assumed a direction on them. In this case it happens that I assumed correctly. Don't spend a lot of time thinking about which way they're going after you figure out their line of action. Just draw an arrowhead on them and move on. Now I'm going to apply static equilibrium to the x direction. After we state our assumption, the next thing we write is our zero statement. Now you'll notice that the only force acting in the x direction is F2x. So then F2x equals zero kilonewtons. Now it may seem trivial to you, however this is a required statement. Why is it important to say this, F2x is zero? Well it's the only force in the x direction so it's going to be zero. And you might say, Josh, can't we just assume that? No. There's a big difference between a zero x force and no x force. Let me illustrate. If we were to try to apply the side loading to this particular object, say we were to try to apply a force here, there's a pin over here that would prevent this beam from rolling to the left or right. So what would happen is F2x would grow to equal the value of this force over here. However, if F2x was not there, if we deleted that force and instead of having a pin at point B, we had a roller at B and a roller at A, there would still be no X force with no force applied, but as soon as we applied a force, the whole object would roll towards the right. That's the difference between a zero X force and no X force. No X force means there's nothing to oppose horizontal motion. A zero X force means just at this particular, in this particular loading situation, the X force is zero, but there could be an X force there to prevent movement. Next, we're going to apply static equilibrium to moments with respect to point B. And looking at these forces, F2X and F2Y both go through point B over here. So they're both going to be produce no moment. With respect to point B, F1 is going to produce negative rotation, and its perpendicular distance is B. L1 is going to produce positive rotation around point B, and its perpendicular distance is B plus x bar 1. L2 is also going to produce positive rotation, and its perpendicular distance is B minus x bar 2. So F1 is then going to equal this, and now we can plug the numbers in, and F1 is going to equal a positive 22.5. Now we're going to finish by checking our solution with static equilibrium with respect to Y. Remember you can check your solution using any static equilibrium you wish except for those you've already used to solve the problem. And now we can plug our values in. Remember, these values come with their signs. So if I would have gotten a negative sign for F1, 
I would have had to plug a negative back into this equation when I put in the value for f1. In this case, I got positives for both, so I plug in positive values, and the solution checks. And I put the answers here in the answer box. Notice I just would put it, the support reactions in, although we had to find the distributed load forces, the problem did not ask us for those as part of the answer. That was just part of the solution procedure.